Good morning. So my discussion for today is Module 1, History of Transportation, Motor Vehicles, and Locomotives. So first, introduction muna tayo. Man's need to travel dates back as early as the creation of human beings. Biblical passage alleged that when Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the forbidden tree, they were sent out by God from paradise of Eden. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to tell the ground from when he was taken. Since then, the human race expanded and our ancestors constantly moved from open place to enable them to survive and others for various reasons. So, nung mga uh, back as early pa, okay? So, the creation of human beings in the biblical passage, ang sabi si Adam and Eve daw, nung kinain nila yung forbidden fruit, okay, sent out sila ni God from the paradise of Eden, Eden, sorry, from paradise of Eden. So, inalis sila doon nung uh, nakain na nila yung uh, fruit of forbidden tree. So, <clears throat> let's go now to the next slide. Next, we have the so-called nomadic. One who constantly migrate from one place to another according to their own detailed knowledge of exploitable resources. The term nomad from the Greek to posture was originally used to refer to the pastoralist groups that migrate in an established pattern to find pasture lands for their domestic livestock. However, the term has Sin has been generalized to include all non-settled population. So, ang nomadic, <clears throat> ito yung mga taong nagmamigrate sa isang uh, one place to another. Okay, naghahanap sila ng mga land na pwede nilang pagtamnan. Okay, ng mga uh, gulay or prutas para uh, makain nila at para mabuhay din sila. Okay, yung yung nomad naman, ito yung tao. Ito yung uh, <clears throat> uh, pastoralist or yung group of people na nagmamigrate sa iba't ibang lugar para maghanap nga ng pasture lands or nung mga uh, <clears throat> lupa na pwede nilang pagtamnan para mabuhay sila. So, yan yung tinatawag nating nomadic or mga nomad. Next, ancient modes of transportation. So, dito na tayo sa mga ancient mo uh, modes of transportation natin. The history of transportation can be conveniently, if over, simply divide into period during which motive power must, was most uh, charac sorry, <clears throat> characteristically furnished by human and animal muscle, by such natural forces as wind and gravity and by fuel-operated machines. So, una, sa manpower muna tayo. Manpower, they carried their own burdens. Ibig sabihin tayo, okay, yung mga, <clears throat> kung makakakita kayo ng mga tao, minsan, sila na yung nagbubuhat ng mga uh, uh, mga damit nila, okay, parang nakalagay lang sa isang uh, tela, okay, so, nakaganon sila. So, yun yung, uh, they carried their own burdens. So, first, carrying pull, <clears throat> balance on one shoulder or two men support the ends of the pull with goods suspended from the pull in between. So, noon, Ang una is manpower. Tao pa lang po ang mga nagbubuhat. So, carrying a pool, pwedeng, uh, binubu pwedeng binubuhat niya dito sa shoulder niya, siyang mag-isa, or pwedeng dalawa naman sila. Okay? End to end. Yan yung tinatawag nating carrying pool. Next, we have the so-called backload and chup line. Goods are carried on the back. So, dito sa back. Next, sledge on rulers. 
place them on sledge that rested on a series of rulers. Okay. Ito naman, uh, parang nakaplace sila sa isang uh, lalagyan, then yung lalagyan na yun, merong agulong. Okay. So, hinihilal, hinihila na lang nila. Next, sledge on runners. A simple sledge, probably man drone, was in use at the end of the uh, and oh, what's this okay uh, parang end nung sledge okay so yan yung mga iba't ibang uh, manpower or yan yung mga types or kinds kung paano nila binubuhat and also have uh, and also we have uh, travois this travois as the pool arrangement called serve as a platform on which the burdens are placed. Yun naman. Kung saan uh, kung saan yung burden or yung <clears throat> uh, yung bigat okay, yun yung tinatawag nating travois. Kung saan siya mas uh, naka so yung travois okay, dyan nila nilalagay or dyan nila piniplace yung uh, mga ilalagay nila. Sabi nga, uh, serve as a platform on which the burdens are placed. Tinatawag siyang travois. Next, sa animal power naman tayo. The domestication of animals greatly increase the potential power available transportation. So, ito yung mga animals na ginagamit nila for transportation. Yung mga humihila doon sa uh, parang kariton, ganun, ito, yung ox or cattle, reindeer, dog, liyama, elephant, horse, camel, and yak. So, yan yung mga animal na ginagamit nila para hilain. <clears throat> okay? Yung sleigh. Okay? Uh, so, <clears throat> isa rin yan yung reindeer. So, yan yung mga animals na ginagamit nila. Next. So, <clears throat> sa wind power naman tayo. Wind power, first, we have the so-called ancient Chinese kite. Kites have been flown as a popular pastime in the Far East since out of the uh, begging of the history. According to a Korean tradition, the kite was first used for transport when Korean general employed one in bridge building. By means of a kite, a cord was conveyed across the river to a cord, heavier ropes were fastened and finally the bridge cable. In the late 10th century, several uh, Euro European armies experimented with kites in transporting men. So, yung kite daw noon, ginagamit din as pag-transport ng mga bagay or mga things para sa pag-build ng isang bridge. So, uh, yung rope, okay, uh, naka-tali <clears throat> doon sa end nung bridge and then doon din sa kabila. So, hilayin na lang nila. So, ganun yung ginawa nila noon. Next, we have the so-called Da Vinci's Ornithopter. The great Renaissance artist, scientist, and engineer Leonardo da Vinci made study of the flight of the birds and his notebook sketch a number of ornithopter, a.k.a. Or topter, which derives its principal support and propelling from flapping wings like those of a bird. Bird. <clears throat> it was not until the 19th century has rigid wings were envisaged. So, yung Da Vinci's Ornithopter by Leonardo Da Vinci. So, pinag-aralan niya. Okay? <clears throat> Kung kung paano nakakalipad yung isang ibon. So, nag -e sketch siya dun sa notebook niya or dun sa sketch pad niya. And then, yung na-invent niya na ornithopter, okay, so, <clears throat> hindi naman siya nagamit. Pero, pinangalalan siyang Da Vinci's ornithopter. 
naka-base yon doon sa uh, ibon. Okay, sa pakpak ng ibon kung paano kung paano siya nakakalipad. Okay, the flapping of wings. So, ganun yung or doon niya inoriginate yung uh, ornithopter na ginawa ni Leonardo. Next, we have Mont Golfer Balloon. <clears throat> Mont Golfer Balloon or the Mont Golfer Brothers of Franz uh, Joseph Michael and Jacques uh, Stein have successfully released several balloons when they proposed to use condemned uh, prisoners for the first uh, ascent with passengers. Okay? Uh, Pelatre de Rouget, a natural historian, protested this and claimed the honor for himself. In, in 1783, he and, Marcus, he and Marquis V. Arlanois became the first man to make a free balloon accent or ascent. The balloon constructed of a linen and inflated with hot air traveled 9,000 yards and remained in the air for 20 minutes. So, yung mon golfer balloon or yung tinatawag nating hot air balloon. Okay? So, noong 1783, okay, sila na yung nakapag-ascend or ascend nung balloon na yon. Okay? Uh, 92 9,000 yards above. Okay? And nag siya sa air for 20 minutes. So, yan yung tinatawag nating Mont Golfer Balloon. Next, we have the so-called Siemens Rocket Plane. Ernest Werner von Siemens, who later achieved fame as an electric industrialist in 1847, designed a rocket plane. So, si Ernest Werner von Siemens pala ang nag-design nung rocket plane, which was to propelled by explosive force of gunpowder. Like the Da Vinci's Oitofter, Siemens rocket plane was never carried beyond the design stage. So, ito namang uh, Siemens rocket plane, hindi siya na-design or hindi siya nagawa. Okay? Hang, para lang siyang din kay Da Vinci's or tofter. Okay? Hanggang sketch lang. Pero hindi siya nagawa as actual. Next, we have the so-called Lilienthal Glider. Otto Lilienthal, a German, a German inventor who also made the study of the flight of birds and experimented with ornithopter going so far as to build a model ornithopter. His chief work was with gliders. However, in 1891, he made first of a number of glider flight which were to exert a profound influence on the development of aviation. Glider, ito yun kapag ka nakakakita kayo ng uh, yung nilalagay dito, then uh, kailangan lang siyang ng width or pupunta kayo sa pinakamataas na bundok and then magda-dive. So, yun yung parang pinakapakpak nyo. Yun yung tinatawag nating uh, glider or paraglider. Hindi po siya parachute ah. Magkaiba yung paraglider sa parachute. O itong glider. Itong glider kasi, uh, para lang siyang pakpak ng ibon. Kung naka, uh, naka, kita na kayo in actual or sa mga pictures lang. So, yun yung tinatawag nating Lilienthal Glider. So, kung uh, hindi pa kayo nakakita in actual, pwede nyo naman siyang i-search. Okay, kung ano yon Para lang siyang, uh, kung ngayon, yung pinaka uh, model na niya, uh, para siyang airplane siya, kaya lang, uh, kailangan pa rin niya, once na uh, ililipat, kailangan kasi siyang ilipat. What I mean, kailangan, meron dapat siyang connectang rope doon sa airplane para lumipad siya. So, tignan nyo na lang. And meron din yung una, yung sinasabi ko nga na parang kinakabit lang dito. So, tignan nyo na lang. Next, we have Santos Domont Airship. One of the pioneers of the development of lighter. 
Thin aircraft was Alberto Santos Domoth, a Brazilian who experimented with the steam powdered balloons in Paris. He made his first balloon ascent in 1897 and in 1898 completed the construction of his first airship. He thereafter built several other airships and in 1901 made 30 minutes round trip flight between St. Louis and Eiffel Tower. So, kay Santos, Mont, ay, kay Santos Domont airship naman, uh, balloons, balloons din siya. Pero yung balloon na na uh, nagawa niya, okay, uh, 30 minutes na nag sa air, and round trip pa from St. Louis to the Eiffel Tower. So, yan naman yung ginawa or na-invent ni Santos Domont Airship. Next, we have the Wright Brother Flying Machine. Inspired by the Lilienthal Glider Experiment, two young Americans, Orville and Wilbur Wright, began studying the problems of heavier-than-air flight. They built a uh, B-plane kite, then over 200 different wing types, which they tested in the wind tunnel of their own invention. Before, they conducted their first man carrying pow powered machine. So, sila po yung nag-invent ng tinatawag nating flying machine or kung saan nag-originate yung uh, airplanes. So, sila yung uh, nag-invent doon. Tinignan nila or tinignan nila yung problema kung bakit hindi makalipad yung mga naunang nag-invent nung mga yon And then, uh, yung sa parang nag-sketch sila ng 200 different wing types. Okay? Or gumawa sila ng different or 200 different wing types para lang matest nila kung ano ba yung nababagay doon. So, yan yung ginawa ng Wright Brother. Oh, so, that was the end of my uh, module 1 discussion. So, uh, thank you and God bless.